There are two distinctives, gospel preaching and spirit empowered. Gospel is simple. Christ did it all. If you don't believe in the total redemption by Jesus Christ, and I can add nothing to what he's done, nothing at all. There is nothing I can do, no prayer, there is no uh, fasting, there is no, no nothing I can do to add to what Christ has done. Healing and miracles come through his atoning power. Uh, deliverance comes through his atoning power. Transformation of life comes through his delivering power. He became sin who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God through him. Everything has been done by Christ. We cannot add to it. We cannot in any way enhance it. We cannot better it. We cannot help it. He did it all. And the good news is, it's done. The bad news is, you can't get involved in it. We're co-workers together with God. And God does the work, and we run the company. In other words, we're here to be brothers and sisters in Christ, and all we do is we watch him work. And the only thing we are is vessels to allow him to do what he wants to do. Is that plain? <coughs> Hello? Very simple. Now it's got to be spirit in power. Can't be with enticing words of man's wisdom. It's got to be in demonstration of the spirit and power. Uh, I love that. Years ago I used to go over to Holland and it was at a time, must have been 15, 20 years ago now, and it was a time when they were all into the worship. It was last time worship came round. It's coming round again, you know, coming round the mountain again. Uh, and they were all into worship, and they'd sing, and they'd do stuff. And, and I hate that kind of false thing. So we, we met in a stable, a block, and they were training Olympic horses downstairs. Um, you know, training horses for the Olympics, you know, and dressage and everything. And we had a room upstairs. Well, it's, it's biblical to be in a stable, isn't it? Uh, um, so we were up there, and the pastors came, miserable pastors, Dutch pastors, always miserable. Um, and miserable people came. Uh, and one thing I did, I said, we'll have no music. And some of the pastors came. You can't have a meeting without music. Because it was all the worship, you know. God can't move without music. So I used to go there and I'd open my Bible and I'd say, right, turn to so and so. And I would just right off the bat preach. And when I'd preach for, you know, a short while, an hour, hour and a half, um, I'd say, now just to prove that what I'm telling you is true. God's going to, and I'd look on the front row, find someone all crippled in a wheelchair and say, God's going to get this person out of the wheelchair. Now these pastors, they got so angry, especially when she got out of the wheelchair and started running. They were so angry. That's arrogance. You can't say God's going to do it to prove you're right. But I did. He did. And it's nice to be able to do that. Uh, because that stuffs them. What's their argument? It, it was funny. Uh, one woman fell down. She went to a conference in Holland. She fell down the stairs and, and smashed her elbows. And she at, was up to, the, up to the top of her arms in plaster. Her elbows smashed and um, whatever it is down there. The... Um, Whatever it is, bone. What's this bone in there? What? What is it? Well, that's it. I don't know. Um, anyway, she broke up, and, and they said that it would take her at least a year to recover. So I asked her, I said, Where did that happen? She said, I went to this conference center, she said, I felt slipped down the steps. 
I said, don't go there anymore. Good advice. I mean, no point in going and getting two broken arms, is there? Anyway, she came, and so I prayed with her. And she, they were shattered. And they said after the, you know, the bones knitted, it would take probably six to 12 months of, of physiotherapy to be able to use them again. So I prayed with her, and God touched her. So when she got home, she got a knife, and she cut the plaster off, and she was completely healed. Bones healed everything. So she went to the church on the Sunday, and she gave a testimony to the church of how God had healed her. And the pastor was enraged. How dare you go to another meeting to get healed? You should get healed here. She said, but you did pray for me and nothing happened. <laughs> well, you have no business going there. So he banned all his church from coming to my meetings. So she said to him, well, she said, just a minute, Pastor. She said, was my healing of God or was it of the devil? And he said, well, I suppose it's of God. She said, well, why shouldn't people who are sick go to his meetings? And so the pastor turned around and said, all right, he said, if anyone wants to go to that man's meetings, you mustn't go on your own. Take someone with you. So I got double the number of people. <laughs> I thought that was great. Great guy. Oh, dear. <laughs> Aren't people cra The devil's crazy, you know. You know? <laughs> The only means of evangelism in the early church was preaching of the gospel. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The gospel. Be familiar with the truths of the gospel. Have them vibrant and living in you. You've got to have your thought patterns steeped in biblical phraseology. You should know gospel truth. The thing is, people out there are crying out for help they're looking for answers but the answers in the Word of God not in your psychological mumbo-jumbo people do not need healing of their memories they need to learn to forget their past they've got a future the power is not in evangelism in it itself but in the good news communicated, the incorruptible seed by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever, which brings about the new birth, we're born again of the incorruptible word of God. You cannot be born again of an idea or a decision. A decision will not bring new birth. It's the incorruptible word of God gets inside when you don't want it to. God saved me when I was trying to prove he didn't exist. This idea that somehow, you know, God's just waiting for you to make your decision. You won't get born again unless you're birthed from God. You're born not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man. You're born of God. And it's all of God and nothing of you. And if it's something of you, you're not born. It's a deception. Is that plain? Hello? Hello? But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. You know, it's a power gospel, and you're a witness. But you're a witness to power. You're a witness to miracles. 